a dying star enjoying the last moments of her life. Two powerful forces are fighting in its depths. They force the star to increase ten times its size, then force it to shrink again only to flare up with new energy. One of these transformations will be the last, but no one can predict the exact date of this event with any certainty. This epic spectacle could be enjoyed by a space traveler approaching the constellation of Leonis. It is there that the pulsating red giant is located, which has been beating in death throes for thousands of years. Greetings to everyone on the Space Stop channel. In this video, we will talk about a supermassive star that is about to end its life cycle with a bright flash called a supernova. Before you start watching, be sure to subscribe to the channel, because every video on the channel is a lot of work. Well, fasten your seatbelts, I wish you a pleasant viewing. At a distance of 650 light years from Earth, there is a majestic star known as C.W. Leonis. Its radius at the peak of pulsation can reach 560 solar radii, which is about two and a half times the distance from Earth to the Sun. With the hypothetical location of C.W. Leonis in the center of our system, all the planets up to Mars would be under its surface. The boundaries of this star would even touch the inner boundary of the asteroid belt. By the way, the mass of the star is not so great, about three times the mass of the Sun. Its surface temperature is about 2,000 degrees Celsius, but because of its impressive size, the star emits an average of eight and a half thousand times more energy than our sun. Like any other red giant, C.W. Leonis is at the final stage of its life. Its age is not precisely determined, but it is estimated to be several billion years old. It is assumed that once C.W. Leonid was a blue-white star with a mass about five times the mass of the sun. However, about a billion years ago, most of the hydrogen of the celestial body burned out and turned into helium, slowly settling in the center of the star. Helium displaced all the remaining hydrogen and formed a red-hot core that did not participate in any thermonuclear reactions. This process is typical for all stars whose mass is close to the mass of the Sun. The internal pressure of the star causes it to expand to a huge size, which makes the outer layers more sparse and unstable. The diameter of the space object increases tenfold, and its color gradually acquires a blood-red hue. A thermonuclear reaction is still taking place in the bowels of the star, which leads to an increase in the pressure and temperature of the stellar plasma. At a certain point, this triggers a chain reaction of nuclear fusion, during which helium nuclei turn into carbon. This is the so-called helium flash. This is a complex multi-level physical process that radically transforms the internal structure of a star. Since its core is incredibly heated, its outer layers, on the contrary, cool down and darken. Currently, C.W. Leonis contains a large amount of carbon, but its mass is not enough to achieve the next level of nucleosynthesis. As a result, the thermonuclear combustion inside the object becomes unstable. Gorenge stellar matter gradually cools and contracts under the influence of gravity. This heats up the inside of the star again, and the reaction is triggered with renewed vigor. Having received a new portion of thermal energy, the stellar matter expands again, and Gorenge disappears. It is assumed that this cyclic process underlies random changes in the luminosity of the star. C.W. Leonis needs as much as 600 days to go through a pulsation cycle, and at its peak its luminosity is about 11,300 times brighter than the Sun. Meanwhile, at the lowest luminosity, the object emits 6,000 times more energy than the Sun. At the moment of compression, the upper layers of stellar matter are partially separated from the star. This forms a carbon and oxygen gas nebula that envelops the star. According to some estimates, C.W. Leonis Lowe's is about seven times the mass of the Earth every year. Observations show that the age of the Circumstellar Nebula is at least 69,000 years, and its mass is about one and a half times the mass of the Sun. As for its size, it reaches 84,000 astronomical units. The nebula has a complex structure with bulges and gas pockets, as well as semi-arcs and irregular rings. It is assumed that these formations appear due to magnetic activity and stellar wind generated by an unstable star nearby. 
The chemical composition of the cloud enveloping C. W. Leonis is of great interest to researchers. Spectral analysis data show that it contains about 70 different chemical compounds. For example, carbon dioxide, water and ammonia, and these are just some of them. There are also quite a few elements from the top of the periodic table, up to iron. C. W. Leonis may have had planets in the past, but apparently they were absorbed at an early stage of expansion. In any case, long-term observations have not revealed any obvious traces of their existence in the past. What was recorded was barely noticeable changes in the orbit of the star back in 1994, and more recently, in the 2017 year. Mysterious shifts of matter were detected in the cloud of gas and dust enveloping the star. Some small red dwarf orbiting a giant could well explain these phenomena. Although attempts to detect its radiation have so far been unsuccessful, this may be due to a nearby nebula, which dissipates and reflects the flow of energy from light sources located nearby. This phenomenon masks any objects in the immediate vicinity and prevents their accurate recognition. The size of the star C. W. Leonis is definitely larger than the Sun. The plane will take about a hundred years to make a complete revolution around the giant. Another outstanding feature is the relatively high water content near the star and its shell. At first, it was assumed that the star would melt and absorb icy comets as it expanded. However, Observations made in the 2009 year showed that the temperature of some spectral lines reaches thousands of degrees Celsius, which is possible only if water vapor really forms in the upper layers of the giant. This fact did not fit into the then accepted model of the structure of red giants, according to which all the oxygen in the stellar matter necessary for the synthesis of water should be completely consumed for the formation of carbon monoxide. Such reactions can occur only at fairly high temperatures, that is, inside stellar matter, but it is practically impervious to cosmic rays. This paradox can be explained by another assumption. Since the star is unstable, large gaps and areas with low density sometimes appear on its surface, where ultraviolet radiation is not blocked as effectively. The total mass of water vapor in the atmosphere and outer layers of the star is estimated at several quintillion tons. No matter how huge this figure may seem, in fact, water is only about a billionth of the total mass of the star. According to modern ideas about the evolution of stars, being a giant, C. W. Leonis is now experiencing its last life cycle. It will exhaust its stellar fuel in the next 10,000 years, after which it will shed its outer layers as a result of a powerful explosion. It will turn into an incredibly hot and dense space object a white dwarf. Its mass will be about 80% of the mass of the Sun, and the temperature will reach several million degrees in the first seconds after the transformation. However, without an energy source, it is destined to slowly and irrevocably fade away over the next billions of years. Eventually, the celestial body will become almost invisible against the background of the cosmic void when it turns into a mysterious black dwarf. But this will not happen in the near future. The shock wave and the mind-blowing temperature in the epicenter will lead to the formation of new elements that are not present in the bowels of the star. For example, uranium, gold and lead. Later they will become part of the new celestial objects. However, millions of years later, Radioactive decay will heat the bowels of the planets, melt the ice and saturate the oceans with trace elements, thus creating conditions for the origin of life. The universe is constantly evolving, and global cataclysms and destruction are an integral part of this process. At the end of each storm, new rays of light appear. I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's really the case, then subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up. Well. I'm not saying goodbye to you, because we still have a lot of new things for you. See you in the new video.